All right, Dad. I've had a recent, actually something recent with my son, Ezra, who this podcast is for, where he's one and a half, actually older than one and a half because he's about to turn two in a couple months here. But as a one-year-old, I felt sometimes I've been in, impatient with him because I want to talk to him like he's, um, I don't know, you know, like 10-year-old, um, a teenager, somebody who I can have conversations with and and share things with, specifically movies and TV shows and Star Wars and things like that. But I was wondering, did you ever have that when I was growing up, when I was one year old? Now, you already had Tori and Marlo as previous uh, practice before me. Did you ever have that even with them when they were young where you felt like, oh, I want them to grow up, I want them to be older? Or did you always feel like, I, I want them to stay young. I want them to stay babies. Um, I wanted to ask your perspective on that. Actually, all three of you are very different. Um, Marlo was like the mother-like. She never really needed anything. She always kind of knew what to do. Um, one time she got in an argument with her mother because she wanted to wear the same dress that she wore the day before to school. And I heard him arguing and Marlo is like five years old and they're arguing about this dress. So unfortunately I got involved in the middle and my, I was asked, you know, what was my opinion? My opinion was if the dress is still clean, um, there's no reason she shouldn't wear it. She could wear it every day. It wouldn't bother me. And then her mother got mad. Tori, on the other hand, was the crazy one. He was the one that climbed trees and, you know, was on top of roofs and just did crazy stuff. He was really smart, but just crazy. One time he was in a tree and Marlo, Marlo asked him, and she's two years older than him, why are you in the tree? And he said, I don't know. <laughs> he just wanted to climb the tree. Just kind of crazy. You were never like either one of those. You were kind of like the professor. He always just kind of watched and, you know, it kind of analyzed everything. And um, <laughs> it was you almost, I felt like, was trying to raise me. <laughs> I remember when you were in grade school and we were on the base, living on the base, probably the first time we ever lived on the base. And actually it was the second time. Uh, but this was the first time in the States and probably the only time. But. I was brushing my teeth and, and I think I've told you this story that you came up behind me and scared the, the be Jesus out of me. And you said to me, why are you running the water when you're brushing your teeth? And I said, because I'm going to rinse my teeth with the water. When you were very young, we used to have these mental battles. You would always challenge me with stuff. Um, and so I, I'll get back to this story and finish it. And I'll tell you how I felt about Ezra and what he should know. Um, and I said, I'm just, you know, rinsing my teeth. He says, you're wasting water. I said, don't you understand? We don't have that much water to waste. This was in California. <laughs> and certainly now that would be the story. I couldn't say anything. You were right. And I wanted to say something. I wanted to smack you and knock you down. You don't talk to your father like that. Who do you think you are? But I never hit you. You know, I never did that kind of stuff. But um, it was a challenge to me to try to keep up with you. So you were, all three of you were different, but you were the one that was analytical. And I don't know if you ever remember when I asked you what you wanted to be, you were like, six or seven years old, maybe even younger. And you said paleontologist. I had to go look it up. I didn't know what a paleontologist was. But you always had this thing about environment and you didn't want to waste anything. I don't know where you got that from. I, maybe Bert and Ernie, I don't know. 
because you used to watch Bert and Ernie all the time. But um, it was a challenge for all three, but you were the hardest because you always had questions for me. It wasn't that I had questions for you. I don't know if you remember this. You were in high school, and I can't remember what happened. You were talking in school or something, and I don't know. I don't know what happened. It wasn't anything major. So you came home, and you said you had got in trouble, and uh, you deserved a punishment. So you put yourself on punishment for like 10 days, um, you know, no no games. You couldn't play basketball with your friends. I never said that. I probably wouldn't have never given you that harsh of punishment for what you did. But you gave yourself the punishment. So you were almost self-raised. I don't know what was different about you than Marlo and Tori, but it was like, I never had hardly ever had to do anything with you because you had it all figured out. And, you know, if something was wrong, it was normally you were telling me. So it's kind of strange. I don't think Ezra's going to be like that. He's kind of like Tory, <laughs> you know, I mean, I watch him in the videos and he's just running all the time. And even when I was there and when I'm around him, you know, he's like, you worry he's going to, fall off the couch or off the bed or out of the crib or, you know, he's always on something and he never stops. You were just the opposite. You were just the cool, calm. You never got excited about anything. Um, you laughed, you know, but it wasn't like you were laughing all the time. Tori laughed all the time. Marlo never laughed, <laughs> but um, you were calculated. Everything was calculated. So it's kind of hard to say what happened with you when you were that age because I never had to discipline you. Um, I never had to spank you. You just kind of knew what was going on. So Ezra's going to be different, but, but the lesson for him to learn all of that is that when you're growing up, you, you just need to listen more than talk. And I've told you this when you were small. You have two ears and one mouth, and that's what God gave you. Which one do you think that he expects you to use the most? And of course, you said the ears. Um, but you were always quiet, and um, Ezra, I think, is going to be just the opposite. Um, he hasn't started talking yet. He's kind of mumbling, and, you know, I said he said a couple words, but but he hasn't really began to talk. You were talking at two years old, you know, and it wasn't conversations we were having. It was just you were talking and most of the time you would ask questions. But I remember one time you were watching Bert and Ernie. We were in uh, Spain and you're just sitting there and Bert and Ernie were talking about an exit. And then I, Bert says, you know, Salida. And you repeated it, Salida. But I would watch you, and whatever they said, that's what you would say. And so you were just a little bit different. I don't think I was going to be like that. I really don't. Um, I don't know how I was as a child. I know I was quiet, you know, but I can't go back to when I was two years old. But for Ezra, um, you're going to have a tough time, I think, Um because you're going to have to explain a lot of things to him. You have to slow him down. You're going to have to make him understand that he has to listen to people. You know, he's, he's so hyper at this point. So it's hard. <laughs> Speaking of Ezra, there's Kale. And she's just like Ezra. You just can't keep her down. You know, she just never stops. So he's the same way. So this is a dog. And so, you know, I spend a lot of time trying to train her. What's, and I don't want to say that a child is like a dog, but you're going to have to spend time with Ezra. And you should begin now. And as I told you before, um, his grandparents from your wife's side should speak Spanish to him so that he understands two languages and he grows up that way. I didn't have that. And, you know, I took languages in college and of course, when I was overseas, it was very difficult because I'm not a language person. 
But if you start out that way, you know, you'll, your aptitude is probably going to be better. Um, but with him, it, it's like I said, it's going to be tough. I can see it already. With Tory, he was kind of the on the wild side, and you know, you always had to say things to him. Um, but I wasn't around Tory as much as I was around you. You know, it's like you've been with me forever. I think the only time we separate is when I went to um, Saudi Arabia and I was gone for six months. And actually, you were a little over two years old because you had just start walking before that, you know, like 18 months, 19 months, something like that. Um, but you were never a problem. You know, it wasn't I had to slow you down, stop you from running, you know, uh, as you're running and I say, come back and you just run faster. <laughs> it never had that problem. You say, come back, you came back. It was just never a problem. Um, but he's, he's different. Every child is different. Um, and you have to channel uh, all of that energy into something. Um, you have to keep distractions away from him uh, and he's going to have to learn that, you know, the world just isn't out there for Ezra to run around. He's got to pay attention, and sometimes you can't run. You've got to walk. And so that'll be the, the lessons you have to teach him. Even at a, a non-verbal where you can't talk to him, um, you have to show him what to do. You have to keep saying it. He'll get it. I mean, he'll be two years old here in a couple months. And he's starting to get it now. I can see it. You know, he's starting to understand what's going on around him. But he's still, he's like a racehorse. He just never stops. So get that under control. Take it and feed it to something. Find something that he really wants to do. And as he grows, you know, he has to find that same stream of, this is what I want to do, and channel all that energy into it. So, you know, for him, it's it's going to be tough, too, because with you, it was just the opposite. Quiet, never talked to anybody. I told you when you went to the nursery, you had one person that you hung around with. You didn't want anybody else. You hung around with one person the whole time you were there. He's not going to be like that. He's going to be all over the place. <laughs> you know, you're going to have to keep a string on him to figure out where he's at. So... Now is the time to form that bond between you and him and um, the direction you'd like to see him go. Now you've got to do it early. If you wait until he's six or seven, he's probably lost. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you got to get him early and make him understand that there is somebody in charge and he's got to pay attention and then just focus on what you want him to do, but um, I think he'll be fine. He's he's a smart kid, you know, for a little kid, less than two years old, he's pretty smart. Uh, but if you talk to any parent, any grandparent, they'll say that about their kids. Um, yeah. And someone yeah. told me, I think a doctor told me once that all kids are smart. The vet told me that all dogs are smart. Because when I said my dog's really smart, the vet said all dogs are smart. <laughs> but it depends on how they're trained. I think the reason why I've been impatient now that you're saying it is probably because of the language and me being analytical and everything that I do most of the time is based on logic. If it doesn't make sense to me, then I don't do it. And so I think I had the same thing with pets where I couldn't speak to them, so I couldn't relate to them just by talking. I think that's where my uh, inf my frustration is coming right now and my impatience of, I want him to be able to talk so I can understand what he's thinking. And then I can tell him, oh, okay, that's not the right way to think, or that's not the best way to do it. And that's, I think where most of my impatience is coming from is in these this first year, for these first two years, not being able to talk to him and then get a response back from him. I think Candy, uh, 
Ezra's mom is much better at relating to him without speaking or without needing him to speak back. She can read his body language and she can understand how he's feeling. And I sometimes I have to ask her, how, I don't know what he wants right now. I don't know if he wants food. I don't know if he wants a nap. So I think once he gets to that point where he's talking to me, I won't feel that same impatience. I'll be able to just say, oh, okay, I know how he's feeling. I know how to react and be, what is my logical mind telling me how to respond to him? So that was, I think, what I was wondering is, did you ever have moments like that where you where you were saying, man, I wish he was a little bit older so I could relate to him more or so I could um, be able to talk to him in that first year or two years you never had that. No, I, I think, as you said earlier, you know, I had practice twice before before you. And I didn't expect you to respond, you know, verbally. But you responded with your body, your body language. I understood you probably more than your mother did. I, you know, it was just, it's just something that, that you know. But... With Ezra, as a parent, you can't lose patience. You have to continue to do the right things and say the right things. You don't smoke, drink. You can run around after women. wonder where you got that from, you know? I mean, I didn't do any of those kind of things. And it wasn't that the people raised me were like that. It was just something inside of me said that that was all wrong and I never did it. Well, you were the same way. When you were small, I, like I said, I didn't have to discipline you a lot. Um, you seemed to just understand based on, you know, the surroundings, talking to you, even when you couldn't respond back to me, you know, you just responded. And I never had a problem. But he's, like I said, all kids are different. And you have to be the patient one until he gets to the point. But if you let him go too long, that that's probably not a good thing to have because it becomes more difficult the older he gets. So that when the younger he understands and the more patience you have with him, he'll have patience with you. As I said, when you were growing up, it was more the opposite. It was like you needed patience with me because you couldn't understand why I did certain things, you know, and you would always ask the question, why are you doing that? And it became like a game with me. It's like, oh, no, what's he going to say this time? You know, what's he looking at? <laughs> I, I always had to think ahead of you because you always had a question. If you saw me with a cigarette in my mouth, you know, I'm sure you would have flipped out when you were a small child. And I don't know, sometimes I, I can't explain it. I was like that when I was young and there's right and there's wrong and you just don't do the wrong. And all three of you, my children, act the same way. They've always been that there's a right and a wrong. And, you know, it's just, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's the parroting. I don't know if it's genes. Um, I don't know. Um, I think it's maybe all of it, you know, but you got to be a parent. You have to be patient with Ezra. You need extra patience because he could drive you crazy. Now I said, he never stops. And he just, you know, it's like getting him to sleep. You were never that problem. You were never a big problem. There was a point, you know, when you were very, very, very young, but your mother took care of all of that. She, she was very patient with you, you know, even as I told you when you couldn't understand and she would read books to you. And I'm sure you didn't understand, but after she read it to you a hundred times, you know, you got the message. Well, it's the same way with Ezra. You just have to keep telling him and telling him and telling him. And eventually he'll get it. I know he probably, Candy probably relates more to him than you. And he relates to her, but she's probably around him more than you. And, and that's part of the issue. But as he grows older, and, and of course, males and, and 
their mothers kind of bond and fathers and daughters kind of bond. That's just human reality. So there's part of that going on too. But there'll be a point where he breaks away from her and he'll be looking at you. So you have to set the tone. You have to set the message for him and you have to do it very early. You can't just wait until the last minute and you don't want him run into his mother for every answer. You know, he needs to come to you sometimes for, for men things. So, or boy things, cause he's going to be a boy before he's a man. So he, he needs that in a father. And you've heard this many times about uh, poor families and the father went away and the child grows up and he has all kinds of problems because he never had a father, you know, I don't know. I, I know that's true, but I not experienced that. And I didn't have to have a father. I just knew what was right and what was wrong. And you were always like that. So hopefully his DNA is part of my DNA and he understands those kind of things. And he'll, you know, he'll adhere to all of that. But when he's 18 months, <laughs> look out. <laughs> And you heard about the terrible twos, and it just gets crazier. And I don't know, you probably didn't know much about Japanese kids, but I could never understand this. You know how polite the Japanese are, how orderly they are. They follow the rules. But when you look at the kids, they aren't like that. And it's just all of a sudden, you know, maybe when they're in grade school, they become the followers. They begin to do all the right things. But boy, when they're young, they're all over the place. You know, in the Japanese, you can't spank a child out in public. It's the same way in Europe. You can't do that. Of course, in the United States, people do crazy things. So, you know, you watch that. But then when you see the Japanese, the kids grow up to be just like their parents. You know, the whole country is just organized. And, you know, they all go in the same direction. Well, where did that come from? Because when they were kids, they were brats. So I don't know. 